Welcome to the Welcome to the African International Mediation Week. Today is the second day of December in the year 2020. And this is the session today at 4.30 p.m., which is an open dialogue on international peace mediation. The forum is hosted by Wasiliana Hub Mediators, and it is to enable mediators to be able to dialogue on the experiences in the area of international peace mediation. Welcome to this session. Mm. So welcome to the African International Mediation Week. Today is the second day of December, and uh, this is the African International Mediation Week and Strategy uh, Conference 2020. And uh, this is the third day of the African International Mediation Week on Wednesday. Our discussion right now uh, in the, today afternoon at 4.30 p.m. East Africa time is in the area of international peace mediation. So the question that we are asking ourselves as mediators is what are the factors that influence or are important to be uh, taken into consideration in the area of international peace mediation and also generally on peace. And most of all, how can mediators be engaged and engage uh, much more or much more uh, productively so they can be better results when it comes to the area of peace mediation. Uh, mediator Anthony Gidai, how are you today? I'm very well, uh, Wangari. Yes, it's, and it's good to have you. Thank you for being here. So I would like to uh, put those questions forth to you uh, in the area of peace. If you could please uh, let us know what are your thoughts on peace and also how mediators or mediation uh, by the mediators who are professionally trained can be uh, made use of and what's happening right now, especially you come from the area of Nakuru, which uh, is an area where there's, there's a lot of peace work in this, in this, in this country. Yes, please, Mediator Anthony, you there? Thank you very much, Wangare. As we know, peace is a very important element in our lives because we are not able to achieve anything without peace being there on the ground. It is also a very elusive thing if we are not very careful on how we are going about the issue of peace. You have quoted the area of Nakuru and uh, Nakuru County is a cosmopolitan uh, county. We know that um, virtually almost all the communities in Kenya, they are represented here in Nakuru. And uh, there are, however, some um, dominant uh, communities in Kenya that are presented here. And um, sometimes uh, we are lacking peace because when people come from different areas, uh, some people feel that their areas, their traditional areas, have been um, much interfered with. And uh, in some cases, they would want to own up some of these places uh, by way of asking other people to go away. And uh, as the people who have come in are being asked to go away, uh, that is not correct because some of them, they have bought land and as such, they have the right to stay where they are because we know at least in Kenya, like what is happening in many other parts of the country, People are allowed to settle anywhere in this country, even the people from the outside, as long as they have been given the authorization by the government. So sometimes there are some flare-ups, like um, uh, recently we had some flare-up at um, Mau um, uh, Ranges in an area called Marioshoni, where one community was asking the other one to leave. As this is happening, sometimes uh, these cases are finding themselves at the courts of law and taking a very long time before they are resolved there. We mediators, uh, we have a very big role to play because uh, we have been trained, we have the patience to look at the real causes of uh, these conflicts. Because sometimes you get the symptoms coming up Maybe one community says the other one is lacking respect for it. 
another community says uh, perhaps um, you came into this uh, land wrongly, but sometimes the underlying reasons for having the conflicts, they are not understood. And we mediators, we are already trained to be able to identify the underlying causes of conflict and we have the skills and the knowledge on how we can take these communities through the cycles of bringing back the peace. So I want to say that um, we have a very big role uh, to play to bring peace um, uh, within communities uh, in Nakuru County. The same thing can happen even in Kenya as general. And the same thing can also be applied even at the international level. As long as the, the space for this is given. We have a very big role, uh, Wangari, uh, and I think um, we are very eager to see whether we can be given that space where we can um, help the communities uh, in Kenya, in Nakuru, and in the world to bring back peace. Thank you very much, mediator Anthony Gizai, uh, uh, who is based in uh, Nakuru, Kenya, uh, for your insights. And uh, there is a number of things that you have said. Uh, one is that, yes, peace is important, yet, and at the same time, peace is elusive. So I think that's also um, something to look at because, uh, or, or that requires to be looked into because if something is so, you know, no, or sometimes something is so good and so, it's so good, it's so important, yet, you know, it's like we cannot achieve it, eh? or we are not achieving it. Um, the next thing that you said, and especially uh, uh, coming from your experiences in uh, Nakuru, and uh, is and and what either has happened or happens in um, in Nakuru and in the uh, area around, is that uh, there is an element of communities experiencing that the other one is coming to either take over, to encroach, and uh, something else that you said is that an experience of lack of respect, and that. Or that already bleeds into now um, a flare-up. Something else that you say that is very important is that there are normal, there are symptoms or there are indicators, there are underlying reasons, and being able to unearth those could actually be the magic that now um, helps uh, helps the communities to be able to be at peace. So what I have uh, heard from you is and and and, and something which I, I I want to also um, ask. Um, for us, how can we look at it in an, in, an, in, an, in, in an upside down way? When we say, can we be given the space? So how can we make this space for ourselves? And then because I highly suspect that all this time, probably we have been sitting waiting. That is why mediators are saying they can see there, is, yeah, there are disputes, but uh, I mean, who are we waiting for? So um, the discussion we are having right now for colleagues who have uh, joined us in the call is that uh, we are having an open discussion in re relation to international peace mediation. And the question we are asking ourselves is um, how can mediators uh, be engaged um, in, the, in the area that relates to peace mediation? And now we're talking about the professional uh, certified mediators. And what are, some, what are some of the issues around this particular field? So if there is a mediator who's on the call, uh, mediator Pauline Wahinia, I don't know if you would like to contribute. Um, Anthony, would you like to add in to the thoughts you just gave in? And uh, if you'd like to contribute, yes, this is an open discussion. Yes, please. Thank you so mm. much. Oh, thank you very much. Wagane, thank you very much. I, I would like to say, what Mr. Yeda is saying is true that uh, peace is very paramount, it's important. And I think as mediators, that should still be one of our agenda as we do our mediation. I think it is very, very important. So I have not dealt with uh, that kind of a conflict personally, where people are and recognizing in that kind of maybe like the way he's talking about Mau or the rad crashes in the left valley, which is very common. People are just are told to leave their, their land and they don't know where they are going. Those are conflicts which I have not dealt with, but uh, with the time, 
I think Wangare, you pick these things, they are very important, and then we can see how we can engage on this. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Rizal. Okay, thank you very much, Vidita Pauline. Yes, please. Uh, and uh, Vidita Antony, mm -hmm. would you have a contribution to add to this? Yes, please. Wangare? Okay, I have, a, I have a colleague who yes, is yes. called Debbie. In, in, the, yes. in, the, in the Zoom, she yes, can yes, maybe yes. say something. She was my classmate in, my, in mediation. Okay, so correct. she can talk. Okay, I yes. hope I, I hope she can hear. She can hear us. She can yes, yes. I introduce her to us. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Yes, uh, Debbie. Debbie spoke to us uh, just uh, uh, when we were just starting off, and uh, yes, uh, I think she will. She she will be type. She can type in her for her comments based on where she is right now, and also be able to speak. Yes. Anthony, would you have any further contribution based on this discussion? Yes. Uh, I wanted to say, you asked me how can mediators um, get the space they are looking for in order to do yes. what they believe they can do. And I want to say that um, the primary responsibility for keeping peace actually in the first place lies with the government of the day. And um, when uh, communities um, uh, who are living together uh, start missing that piece, uh, the primary coordinator normally is the government. And um, they run to the government, they run to the government offices, particularly the office of the, 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 pro the, the, the president, the provincial uh, administration for assistance. So, I believe and I think that one of the activities we mediators should be having is to engage the government and uh, tell them that we can help, we can assist um, in looking for the peace, at least for the communities in uh, various ways. And uh, we can market ourselves. We can bring to the attention of the government um, about uh, the scope of what can be achieved. And I'm sure when we are able to demonstrate to the government what we can do at what stages, then I'm sure that space we are looking for will be available. Uh, because I believe sometimes the communities are at war with each other because they do not understand where the rights of the other person uh, ends. Sometimes the, their perceptions on the presence of these other people is not well founded. And once they are taken through all those steps, they, they will be able to understand that the mediators can play a very key role um, in this area. Sometimes it may be true that uh, there are many rights of the indigenous that have been uh, trodden on, on uh, perhaps they may be having genuine land issues which they are not able to present to the authorities in a manner they will be understood and accorded what they are looking for. And I'm sure mediators are in a position to go at the root of this matter and help the government understand the causes of the problems and how the possible solutions and together come up with solutions. This is what I wanted to add. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, uh, something quite imp uh, important you've added on to this is that uh, uh, there, there, there is a big role by the government or the government, the government is a facilitator, is, uh, is responsible and is at the, at the core of this matter. So mediators engaging with the, uh, the, the respective offices, which could probably, uh, this would now look like the offices, the local administration, the provincial, yes, the provincial administration, the local administration offices, there is also the security, um, security office, the security. And while why these discussions we are having are very important because you, you notice like right now, we already PK, we already picking just in this discussion that, okay, so probably if we target or make a, a certain office know that there are mediators, then they could engage mediators um, or they could know their mediators and engage them or direct them to where mediators can be able to provide their service. So, so far in this uh, discussion, we have highlighted uh, several things that relate to peace um, and mediation. Uh, one is with regards to communities. The second one is with regards to 
um, uh, engaging government. And the third thing that I've also had in this discussion is the part of positioning mediators so that mediators can be known for peace mediation. Now, is there any other contribution before we can be able to close this session? Any other yes, contribution? I want to yes, ask please. Mr. Yivae whether in his line of duty of peace in mediation, well, how, as he spoke about the government, there is national cohesion and integration mm -hmm. with the commission uh, to advocate for peace. How do you interact with, those, with that commission as we are talking of the commissioners in the, in the counties and maybe chiefs who knows the people who are bringing conflict into their communities? How do you work with that, with them? Uh, I think, Pauline, what we should do is just supplement their efforts, get into discussions with them. These people would like allies, would like people who understand what they are doing, who can lend a hand, who can interact with the community um, with the one single aim of uh, bringing peace. So the idea here is to be complementary to the services that they are providing. And I'm sure they will be very happy to know that somebody else is willing to give a hand. They will be happy to know that there are people who know, believe that they have the, what it takes to diagnose the problem and get to the root of the matter and even suggest solutions, more so when it is being done together with these communities. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Gidai, something I have heard um, uh, from you that I think would be very important, and, uh, and, and it can even be uh, the, 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 the aspect that is about the positioning of mediators, is positioning mediators as allies. And uh, from that very important question from uh, uh, mediator Pauline Wahinya, I think F uh, around mediation and peace are there. But uh, it seems. Can you, it seems can you please like, come again? I've missed uh, quite a bit of what you were saying uh, towards the end. Okay. Yes. Um, what I, what, uh, the question that uh, Mediator Pauline Wahinya has raised with regard to an entity like the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, and also earlier you pointed out that there is a uh, local and uh, 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 the local local administration, and also we talk we, we can talk about like the security, is that we we thought that we lack structures, we thought that we lack bodies, but I think because we are talking about so how do mediators engage with this work? So what I've heard and picking from one of the three points we had raised earlier, we had raised that yes, there is the element of communities. Number two, engaging with government. And the third one we had talked we talked about is about positioning of mediators. So what I've heard from you is we probably need to have a, a group of mediation mediators who are positioned as allies to peace. Then they are now the ones who can be tapped into by these uh, government agencies or non-governmental agencies or other of the communities in then when whenever there is a need for peace mediation. That's what I yes I've heard from your your contribution. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I think one of yeah. the most important elements um, involved in this are the the tactics the mediators have learned in the helping the parties involved to uh, come up with their own solutions, solutions that are being seen to be internally and locally generated. Mediators are very well trained uh, to be able to support the teams, guide the discussions, guide the conversation so that uh, communities can um, bring out the solutions. These people, they know what they want. I think the biggest problem that normally is there is the communication between these two teams. And that's where uh, mediators have been trained to facilitate the discussions and generate the solutions uh, by the people 
for the people. So I would not say that um, uh, the structures, yes, they are there, but uh, they need more support. Mm. Uh, they need more skills to be included. And uh, that's where mediators could uh, come in. And as you know, there are two things here that may be, um, may be very necessary. One is the authorization by the government, because for anything, anybody is doing, it has to be done in line with the government policy. It has to be done with their knowledge, with their approval. Uh, number two, I think there is no work that can be done without the necessary uh, funds uh, mm -hmm. for the activities that okay. are going to be there on the ground for the need for to be done. So uh, the structures may be there, uh, but funds require to be mobilized. Um, but the extra uh, structures need to be added within the existing one so that the needful can be done. And I believe that uh, we have the responsibility to bring this to the attention of the decision makers, to the attention of the key players, uh, so that we can join hands together and do the needful. So the yes, uh, what what I hear from you is the, still the, is is the emphasis that uh, we can, mediators have the great opportunity to be positioned as uh, persons who are, who can support uh, for peace. Uh, and what you've also raised that there is a need for resources so that this work can get done. And I think if then if there is greater cooperation between or the uh, mediators are known that they can be able to um, make a difference when it comes to uh, areas where peace is required, then there could, the resources could actually then be directed so that mediators can be able to do this work. Uh, so the conversation we are having right now and uh, is, is with regard to, uh, uh, is, is with regard to international peace uh, med, um, or, and, or, and peace mediation. And uh, what we are sharing is our experiences on uh, peace mediation and specifically uh, trying to come up with what can be action areas or uh, what can be action areas. So one of the points that has been raised is, been raised is that yes, the communities themselves, mediators can actually engage with the communities. Secondly, is engage with uh, the government, uh, engage with government bodies. And then uh, thirdly, uh, we've also um, highlighted that uh, mediators require to be positioned as, uh, to be posi mediators require to be positioned as allies then when they are positioned as allies, then entities or structures that exist, whether they are government, uh, grassroots uh, yeah, entities, then they can be able to now call on or know that they can call on um, certain mediators who are involved in matters to do with peace. Uh, Bernard Rotich, I would you have a contribution to this discussion uh, on, on peace and uh, peace mediation and how mediators can be able to, en to, to engage in this uh, area of mediation? Yes, please, Mediator Bernard Rotich. Okay, thank you so much, Wangare. Welcome. I've just joined. So yes. maybe what I can just say with a, a case of Kenya, when we had the post-election violence, then we had uh, Mediator, the late Kofi Annan, playing a very key role. Uh, what I believe is that we can have some societies playing a very key role in ensuring that uh, peace is obtained. When we have uh, two... Rotich, you are you're muted. Rotich, you're muted. Rotich. Mediator Bernard Rotich, kindly. Uh, if you can unmute. Yes. Oh, sorry, you're muted again. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, you can speak and we can let you know if we can hear you now. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry, I had muted my mic. So I was saying that I've just joined. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, I would wish to, to say that uh, mediation in between uh, international mediation 
the there are some societies which can play a very key role in ensuring that a peace or a conflict is resolved. I was giving a case of uh, the conflict where we had a, we can have cross-border conflicts or we can even have uh, some an international mediator coming like uh, in the case of Kenya where we had post-election violence and we had two uh, principles having a conflict, then we had an international mediator coming to, to do that. So I want to believe that for international mediation to be very successful, then we need to understand uh, about various government policies about the other countries. So it calls for us as mediators to go beyond so that we can be able to know what is going on in other, in other countries. I want to believe that I'll still contribute as we go along because I've just joined. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, for that contribution. Uh, what 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 I have heard from uh, 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 Mediator Bernard Rotich and Mediator Bernard Rotich has now taken our conversation to the international uh, peace mediation for mediators to actually engage in the international peace mediation. Then that mediators need to actually understand uh, the uh, the matters that have to do with uh, the the, uh, the 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 different countries, the different regions, so that then we can be able to be engaged there. I think that's also a very good point to um, add on to the ones that we had. The ones that we had uh, were focused on more on more on a, on a local level, but also I think the third one about positioning mediators as allies, I think that can be borrowed, whether it's local or international mediation. Now, is there any other contribution, or we can be able to uh, close uh, our, our 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 conversation now? Is there any other contribution with regard to whether it's or local peace or uh, international peace uh, mediation? So the inquiry that we had is uh, what I mean. What are the factors uh, or around peace and international, or that would make international national peace um, effective? And how can practitioners be engaged or involved? And I believe we at least have um, four action areas: um, the engagement with communities, with governments, positioning mediators as allies, and then. The fourth one, which uh, Mediator Bernard Brutic has raised with us, is that uh, we need to be able to understand the policies, which also may also mean also understand um, the other intricacies, because it's much more than uh, may meet the eye. So with those uh, contributions, colleagues, I'd like to thank you for joining this discussion. This was our discussion today on the second day of December in the year 2020, and this is the third day of the uh, African International Mediation Week, where we are having discussions with uh, uh, or engaging as uh, communities of mediators and dispute resolution professionals uh, for our Africa, virtual African International Mediation Week and Strategy Conference. The Strategy Conference will be hosted on Friday, which is where we consolidate our discussions and determine what is the way forward, either as an individual practitioner or even as different groups that uh, we identify we identify with. So our next session will be at 6 p.m. and uh, you will be using the same uh, link that you used to join this discussion. That discussion uh, will be led by uh, our facilitator, mediator Jane um, uh, Amiri, who's a peace worker, researcher, and trainer. And it will, it, it will advance this discussion that we have started now. The discussion will focus on the United Nations Security Council Resolution uh, 1325, which is on women, peace, and security. And uh, this is the 20th anniversary celebration. And uh, after that, which is at 8 p.m., we will have a discussion, uh, actually a masterclass training that will be focused on uh, mediation practice, business models, strategy, and marketing, how you can be able to uh, market and also how you can be able to uh, develop your mediation practice. We look forward that you'll be able to join in, the, in that discussion. Uh, the training will be led by uh, the San Francisco Bar, Bar Association, which is uh, in the US, and they have been in mediation for very many years, and they will be leading us in, uh, that, particular, in that particular session. So we encourage you that you join us because it is when we are, well, the, 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 the water in the river is all flowing together, then that it, it actually can move boulders. And we believe that in your work, you can be able to move boulders that enable uh, communities and, and that you're talking about, and even ourselves, to. Uh, increase the peace within families, communities, nations, and also in businesses. We will close this session with the words of our national anthem in Swahili, the first stanza. And we look forward to seeing you in the, uh, in the next session. Have a good the rest of the afternoon. 
and see you at 6 p.m. East Africa time, and then also the next session at 8 p.m. East Africa time. Thank you very much for joining, and God bless you. The words of our national anthem in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ileke baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukaye na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha, tupate na ustawi. Thank you for joining us for this session at the African International Mediation Week on the second day of December, and we look forward to see you in the next session. Have a good afternoon. God bless you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kabiro. Okay, uh, mediators, so thank you for uh, this particular session, and we will be seeing each other then in for the next session. Uh, when it's starting off, we will be together. So see you, and God bless you. Thank you for the time. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.